Okay, so we'll start today's lecture. Uh, last time we started uh, the subject of uh, studying freeform curves, and uh, what we did is to look at uh, one of the uh, curves that is uh, namely Hermite curves, uh, which is uh, basically an interpolation curve. So from today onwards, uh, we'll look at uh, a few representation for freeform curves which are uh, mainly uh, approximation curves. Okay. One of the curves which we are going to study today is uh, Bezier curve, okay, which is in fact one of the earliest free form curves which has been proposed uh, when the geometric modeling subject was developed. So, the title of today's lecture is Bezier curves. Now, as I said Bezier curve is an approximation curve. Uh, now, when I say approximation curve, whatever inputs which you give in order to define the curve, uh, all the inputs are not satisfied. Okay. These inputs will be used to define the curve. Okay. Uh, like for example, if I uh, take an example of a Hermite curve which we have already studied, when we say there is a four point form, if I specify four point, the curve necessarily passes through all the four points, but that may not be true uh, when I give four control points here. Uh, where uh, these control points are used to define the curve, but curve uh, does not pass through uh, all the points. So, that is why this is classified as an approximation curve. Now, this was uh, first proposed in 60s uh, by a French uh, by name P. Bezier. Uh, this was a part of uh, a CAD system called as a unisurf. Okay. So, first time the Bezier curves uh, find uh, they were proposed as a part of this particular package called Unisurf. And uh, the purpose of Unisurf was to basically uh, develop uh, some curve which can be used to define free form or sculptured surfaces of uh, automobile uh, bodies. So, in order to like in the process of coming up with uh, a new uh, curve representation for sculptured, surfs, uh, sculptured surfaces, so this particular uh, curve has been proposed. Uh, first time by the Bezier. And uh, a cubic Bezier curve is defined by four control points. Okay. Uh, just like uh, a cubic parametric cubic curve or a cubic Hermite curve is defined by four points in a four point form. Uh, similarly, a cubic Bezier curve is defined by a four control points. And uh, a Bezier curve need not be cubic. Cubic is one of the representation which is popular, but uh, one can also have higher order curves uh, as far as Bezier is concerned. And the points are called here as a control points, because uh, these control points will define the shape or in a way they dictate the shape, what will be the shape of curve. If I change control points, I am also changing the shape of a curve uh, in a Bezier curve. Now, here is a pictorial representation of the curve. So, I have four points that is P 0, then there is P 1, I have P 2 and P 3. Okay. Uh, you see that the they are numbered from 0 to 1. Okay. So, cubic means you will have, you will go up to P 3. If it is one higher order that is quartic uh, fourth, then I will go from P 0 to P 4. So, it is this kind of representation is easier. So, it starts with uh, uh, a point which is P 0 and P 1, P 2, P 3 are the four points which are used to define. Now, the curve can be either uh, a planar curve, it can lie in a plane. If all the four points which are defined in a plane, so then it is a plane, planar curve or uh, if I give four points in a space, I can also define a Bezier curve which is a spatial curve or it is usually called as a space curve. So, these P 1, P 0, P 1, P 2, P 3 uh, can be uh, anything like whatever it can be lie in a plane or it may be out of plane whatever it may be. Now, one of the things which you see uh, from this particular this thing is the curve passes through uh, the first and last points which are defined like P 0 is the starting point uh, it passes through that P 3 is the last point. So, it also passes through that, but uh, it uses the coordinates of the other points in order to define the curve, but it it does not pass through in this particular case. Okay. So, that is why we call it as an approximation curve uh, which is uh, shown here. 
as I said these four points which are used to define the curve are called as a control points okay. uh, and uh, depending on the like position and uh, position of the control points the curve will be diff uh, curve will be a different. For example, if I take let us say one of the control points and move it to a new place okay, as a part of a curve design the curve shape automatically changes. So, somebody who is trying to define let us say a curve uh, not necessarily mathematically let us say interactively interacting with a computer also can use this kind of uh, a representation. First I will display all the control points and the corresponding Bezier curve then keep manipulating these points by moving from one place to another to see how the curve changes its shape and uh, try to arrive at a shape which is visually pleasing for certain applications uh, like particularly in a graphics uh, applications. But it also has a mathematical definition which will be used uh, to manipulate the curve or to define a curve uh, which has uh, desirable starting and end points and desirable properties. The four points which are used here in order to define a cubic Bezier curve, uh, when I join them by straight lines, the polygon uh, which is formed by joining these vertices is usually called as a control polygon. Basically, control polygon is nothing but a polygon formed by joining the control points. Okay. Another name which is given for uh, control polygon is characteristic polygon. So, that is uh, in some of the texts some people uh, use uh, the word characteristic polygon more often for uh, defining uh, a polygon which is formed by joining the control points. So, what you see here is uh, a characteristic polygon which is shown uh, in a different color uh, in this particular aspect. So, the input uh, if you see uh, to a Bezier curve here is uh, if I am taking an example of a cubic Bezier curve. So, I have a first point which is uh, defined by three coordinates okay, uh, x 0, y 0, z 0. Then I have second and third points, second point here is x 1, y 1, z 1, uh, third point is x 2, y 2, z 2 and then there is a fourth point which is x 3, y 3, z 3. So, the first point is, is also the starting point the curve passes through that and fourth point is an end point curve also passes through that and these are the control other control points through which uh, the curve does not pass through. Now, one important thing is order of these points is important. If I change the order of these points, okay, it is not that given four points uh, and uh, you have a unique curve whatever may be the order. That is true with uh, even when we do Suppose, if you are given a set of points and you are asked to fit a curve passing through that, the order is always important. Okay. So, similarly here also the what order which I specify is important because first and last are the uh, interpolation points that means the curve passes through these points uh, which is uh, one of the properties of the Bezier curve. Now, mathematically uh, a cubic Bezier curve. This is a definition for a cubic Bezier curve which is shown here and uh, a curve can be defined as uh, we have seen earlier any uh, curve can be defined as a function of a single parameter. The parameter which is shown here is a u okay. and uh, what you see here is only equation which is given for the x coordinate okay. like x which is a function of u is defined by uh, a mathematical expression which is shown here and what are the inputs which are used to define the x, x 0 that is the coordinates x 1, x 2 and x 3 that is only the x coordinates of the four control points which are given. And uh, if you see the equation it has uh, two terms okay, like one is 1 minus u cube uh, like one is basically a power of 1 minus u another is a power of u. So, you have a various combinations of this. For example, you start with 1 minus u cube and it is u to the power of 0 that is nothing but 1. Then 1 minus u square you reduce the order by 1 and it becomes u to the power of 1 and then you have 1 minus u and u square and then it is u cube. So, 
slowly you are decreasing the power of 1 minus u and increasing the power of uh, the term u. So, it is very easy to remember, okay. uh, there is uh, no difficulty in remembering if I look at this. Another this thing which you also see that there is also a coefficient for all these things. You start with 1, then you have a 3, then you have sec third expression also has 3 and fourth again reduces to 1. So, it is like 1, 3, 3, 1 are the coefficients which are used to do that. And uh, you also have uh, uh, a range for this particular curve because you are referring to a curve segment. Uh, so, it is uh, the parameter varies between uh, 0 and 1. Now, suppose if I substitute u is equal to 0 in this expression, this becomes 0, second expression, third and fourth terms also become 0. So, I am only left with x 0, that means the curve passes through that. Similarly, if I put u is equal to 1, the first, second and third uh, terms become 0, because they all carry 1 minus u and uh, I put u is equal to 1, so it reduces to x 3, so the curve passes through that. So, this kind of uh, a representation uh, is easy to remember and this is a definition for uh, a cubic Bezier curve, a mathematical definition which is given. I can extend the same definition to y and z. Okay. All that which you have done is that uh, you have the same expression, these x 0, x 1, x 2 and x 3 have been replaced with y 0, y 1, y 2 and y 3. As we have seen earlier uh, that x, y and z can be independently defined uh, with like no relation among the coefficients of x, y and z, uh, which is true with Bezier curve also. Uh, that is a uh, this that was true with uh, parametric cubic curve also Hermit curve which we discussed this thing. So, this is a complete definition of uh, a Bezier curve where uh, x y z uh, are defined. This is the expression which is uh, x expression which I have produced again. Now, I can always rewrite this particular equation slightly differently. Okay. What is done is you have the same expression the coefficients which were 1, 3, 3, 1 uh, basically correspond to the binomial coefficients okay. like 1 is nothing but 3 c 0, 3 is 3 c 1, 3 c 2 is same as 3 c 1 because uh, this is 3 c 3 minus 1 and uh, then 3 c 3 is again 1. So, the binomial coefficients are like 1, 3, 3, 1 which have been written in this. In fact, the way a Bezier curve is defined is that these coefficients are always the binomial coefficients, okay. those have been used <coughs> to define the Bezier curve or I can simplify the expression further by saying that. So, you have a four terms which are uh, this thing like you have uh, four terms which goes from i is equal to 0 to 3 and if I substitute i is equal to 0, then this is 3 c 0, then this is i is 0, so this is 1 minus u cube and u to the power of 0 is 1 and this is x 0. So, that is nothing but exactly the first term which I am trying to use. Similarly, by substituting let us say i is equal to 1, I can get back uh, an exp this term and substituting i is equal to 2, I get the third term and by substituting i is equal to 3, this is 3 c 3 and this becomes 0 you have u cube uh, into x 3. So, you can compress the entire definition of uh, let us say a Bezier curve, a cubic Bezier curve which has been taken here as a very simple expression which is shown uh, here. So, we can say that this is a more generic definition, uh, this is basically an expanded form of uh, the definition and what is shown here is only for the x, you have similar terms for y and z which are not shown here. So, this was uh, the same curve which we saw uh, in the last slide which has been reproduced here. Now, I can extend the definition to higher order. So, I can have a quartic Bezier curve where uh, I go to terms like 1 minus u to the power of 4 and u to the power of 4 and it is defined by 5 control points. So, you go from 0 to 4. So, corresponding to 0 to, 0 to 3, we had 4 terms here. So, corresponding to 0 to 4, I have 5 terms here and now the binomial coefficients are different. 
they start from 4c0, 4c0 is 1, 4c1 is 4, then 4c2 is 6, then 4c3 is again 4 and 4c4 is 1. So, I have binomial coefficients in this case as 1, 4, 6, 4, 1 uh, which are uh, this thing and similarly you have the slowly you reduce the power of 1 minus u to the u and then increase the power from uh, 0 to 4 and you have 5 x coordinates which are given which correspond to 5 control points. Now, in this case the curve again passes through the first and last it need not pass through any of the 3 control points which is given. Okay. The same definition which is extended. So, a representation like this becomes a very general or a generic representation. I can go to one order higher this is called as a quintic Bezier curve where you go to a terms like u to the power of 5 etcetera binomial coefficients are different. I have now total how many terms 6 terms which are used to define uh, a quintic Bezier curve and the definition can be extended to uh, a curve where you have uh, n plus 1 control points. So, if it is a fourth like if I am having a powers which are maximum power is 4 then you have 5 points. So, if I have like maximum power which goes is u to the power of n or 1 minus u to the power of uh, n then you it goes from 0 to n it can be defined by n plus 1 control points will define uh, an nth order Bezier curve. So, the definition is very simple I think uh, given this definition you can have like you can write it for any order whatever may be the n whether it is 3, 4 or 5. So, remembering this is much easier. So, it is a simple uh, expression to define also. Now, let us look at uh, some of the properties of Bezier curve uh, like what is uh, really a speciality of this curve why this curve is given so much importance uh, is uh, one of the uh, like uh, subjects of study now. This is what is shown here is a cubic Bezier curve uh, where uh, it is defined by 4 control points that is P0, P1, P2 and P3. One should remember here is that each P0, P1 which are shown here is a vector consisting of uh, 3 components x0, y0, z0 or x1, y1, z1. Now, the tangents at the end points are defined uh, by end points and their adjacent points. So, these are the end points if I look at what are the tangents at these end points they are defined by the last 2 points. For example, even if I take let us say a Bezier curve which has 6 control points then I am defining a quintic Bezier curve. If I take let us say what is the tangent, tangent is always follow the direction where you are going from point if I join them by a straight line. So, I have a vector which is going from P 0 to P 1 which will always represent the direction of the curve. So, this will this straight line will always be a tangent to the curve is one of them. So, it interpolates the last points then the slopes which are first derivative are defined by end points and one point which is next to that. So, same is true with here like the slope in the case of end point is defined by P 2 and P 3 which are uh, in this case. Now, this property is not restricted to uh, like uh, what is called as end points or the slopes it can be extended to higher also. That means, if I want to know the second derivative of the curve at the end points they are completely defined by the last 3 end points like if I take P 0, P 1, P 2 will completely define what is the second derivative or uh, more commonly what you call as a curvature. So, curvature is defined by that. So, if I look at expressions for curvature these are the kappa which is shown here kappa 0 and kappa 1 are the curvature of the curve at the end points. So, what do you mean by curvature? Uh, curvature is uh, nothing but uh, 1 by the radius of curvature. So, the local radius of curvature when I take a reciprocal I get a curvature. So, the curvature at 0 and 1 that means, uh, this is not at point 1 this is the end point that is when u is equal to 1 this is when u is equal to 0 
I have an expression which is given for the Bezier curve, uh, which has been derived. If you really look at this, uh, what are the points on which k0 depends is it depends on p0, it depends on p1 and it depends on p2. Now, this expression is not necessarily for cubic curve. This expression for curvature is a very generic, whether I am using a quartic or a quintic or let us say I am using 10 points to define a Bezier curve, still this is the expression which is used for curvature. And similarly, the curvature at the other end point is defined by completely defined by 3 points. What are those points? It is p n which is the last point, then you have p n minus 1, 1 prior to that and p n minus 2 that is the second one which is prior to that. This means suppose if I take let us say n is equal to 10, that means I have 11 points which goes from 0, 1, 2 up to let us say 10. Whatever may be the position of let us say uh, the points, for example, p 0, p 1 and p 2 will affect whatever may be the let us say the coordinates of p 3, p 4, p 5 etcetera intermediate that does not affect the curvature value of the curve. So, it is only defined by the 3 points. So, uh, we can say that uh, a second derivative will be defined by the 3 adjacent points, slope will be defined by 2 adjacent point. If I go one level lower that is curve passes through the last points and same thing can be extended to higher. Like if I take the third derivative, this is the second derivative, if I take the third derivative that will be defined by the 4 points which are starting from end point and the neighboring points. So, this property is one of the uh, unique properties of uh, Bezier curve uh, which we have seen. So, we have seen uh, basically for uh, uh, the slopes and the curvature, but the same thing can be extended to higher orders when it comes to the definition of the curve. Here is another uh, very interesting property of uh, Bezier curve uh, is that as we said sequence of points is important in order to define the Bezier curve, but uh, if I reverse the sequence I get back the same curve. Like suppose instead of giving p 0, p 1, p 2, p 3 as input I give let us say input as p 3, p 2, p 1 and p 0 that means you are keeping the order same but only reversing it and if i try to plot the curve the or try to come up with let's say mathematical definition for the curve you have the same curve that means curve doesn't change its shape or size by reversing the order of points okay but if i change it other way around then i may have a difference that means one can say that uh, the curve is symmetric about the two functions that is 1 minus u and u. Only thing which you are trying to do is reversing, you are starting with let us say u cube term and going to 1 minus u cube, uh, whereas in the other case it is different. So, if I just reverse the points, okay, this is the case where I am starting from p 0, p 1, p 2 and p 3, uh, it is the same curve, but only thing which changes is the direction of parameterization like whenever you define a curve you also specify a parameter range that is it goes from 0 to 1 uh, u is a range. So, now u is equal to 0 corresponds to uh, a different point and when I say u is equal to 0 0.3 it will be different for the two different curves, but uh, the curves are the same only the direction of parameterization has changed in this particular case. So, reversibility of the curve is important. Now, why is this important is suppose you are given a set of points and you have to define a curve uh, like instead of let us say reading from one direction if I have to read from the other direction or the way I collected the data points may have reversed. So, it should not change the shape of a curve, I should still get the unique curve in the case of this. So, this is another very interesting property of the Bezier curve which is shown here. The other important property is that the curve is invariant under affine transformation. Now, I think this needs some explanation. Like usually what happens in uh, geometric modeling or uh, that is CAD and computer graphics work is that uh, suppose if I have to define a curve uh, 
let us say which is located somewhere in the space, you first try to define the curve at some convenient location, let us say either in a x y plane or let us say r curve starting at uh, origin and then you place this particular curve wherever it is intended to be. So, in order to do that you do a transformation, these are called as the geometric transformation. So, the common transformations which are used geometric uh, transformations is one is translation that is you move a curve from one like one place in a space to another place in a space. So, a transformation can be defined by defining a vector which is a translation vector which is uh, translation in x direction, y direction and z direction. Similarly, I can have uh, a rotation transformation. Uh, rotation transformation could be either rotation about x axis, y axis, z axis or any axis, any arbitrary axis which is defined in a space and uh, or I can have uh, a transformation like scaling. When you are scaling an object uh, in x, y and z direction, either the scaling factors in x, y and z directions can be same or they can be different. Then there is also operations like transformation operations like shearing which is also one of the very common operations. Uh, so, these are four common uh, transformations which are used that is translation, rotation, uh, the scaling and shearing. The only difference is uh, the translation and rotation transformations are called as a rigid transformations. It will not change the shape of the curve, it will only change the location that is where it is located and position. Whereas, scaling and shearing transformations changes the shape of the curve. Okay. Like when I scale an object, uh, for example, some of its properties changes. What is the length of the curve? It will be a different when I scale an object with certain scaling factor. Now, all these four transformations which are applied to Bezier curve are invariant. What do you mean by invariant is like if I apply the transformation to the control points, I will get back the same curve which is nothing but as if you are applying the transformation to the curve itself. This can be demonstrated by a simple example. Suppose I have let us say a curve here which is defined by 4 a cubic Bezier curve which is defined by 4 control points. Now, I move all the control points let us say uh, along certain directions. So, you have a vector where P 3 has been moved to a new position which is called as a Q 3. P 2 is moved by Q 2. So, P 1 is moved to Q 1 and P 0 is moved to Q 0. So, if I draw a vectors, these are all the same vectors. So, there is a, a rigid translation which has been done. Now, the question is whether I should uh, first like if I want to let us say translate the curve, should I first define the curve and translate or translate the control points and define the curve again these are the two situations. One situation is like first I have defined the curve with P, P 0, P 1, P 2, P 3 as control points and apply transformation on the definition of the that is whatever is the mathematical definition which is given to a Bezier curve. So, that I get back this. Another this thing is if I since these transform these control points are used first you transform the control points and then use the new control points to define the again Bezier curve, both are one and the same. Okay. That is why you say that the curve is invariant under transformation. Same thing is true with rotation and other transformations also. This is actually a very important property, otherwise uh, if this property is not there, then there are definitions for curves which are uh, uh, not invariant. In those situations, uh, you have to also define whether your transformation is applied to a curve or to a control points or to the input which is defined, which is like a very difficult thing to handle. So, very convenient thing to do is to use like Bezier curve which are invariant uh, this thing. Same thing can be demonstrated for rotation, scaling and also for operations like shearing operations which are used about that. There is uh, another property of uh, Bezier curve which uh, makes it uh, really appealing is what is called as a convex hull property. Okay. 
uh, you may have come across the term convex hull. Okay. Uh, what is a convex hull? Is? Like convex hull is usually used to define, uh, for example, often used with polygons. Okay. Suppose uh, if I have, uh, let us say, a set of points or let us say a set of vertices, if I can find out, let us say, a minimum size polygon which can enclose all these points, then you call it as a convex hull okay. and it should be a convex polygon. We also, we are also, you are also familiar with what is a convex polygon and a non-convex polygon. Okay. A convex polygon is one in which if join any two vertices of the polygon, the line joining these two vertices lies completely inside the polygon. Okay. This line completely lies inside a polygon. If it does not, then you have a non-convex uh, polygon. So, a convex hull is, uh, suppose if I have a non-convex polygon, then you are trying to define a polygon which is like a convex hull of that. That means, the minimum size polygon which encloses all the points and also convex in nature. Now, this I think uh, convex hull property here is slightly different in the sense, what you are trying to do is uh, I have four control points and I can join them in a sequence 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3 and 3 again back to 1. So, there will be a polygon which is formed which we know is called as a characteristic polygon or a control polygon. The curve always lies entirely inside the polygon. Okay. So, it never goes out of the polygon whatever may be the uh, polygon which I am trying to use. So, I will always have this property which is satisfied by the Bezier curve. Now, I think this may not be a clearly um, evident. Uh, suppose if I take an example, suppose if I change the let us say order of points slightly different. Suppose this is my first point which I am trying to use, then I take this as my second point and come back to this as third and fourth. Then you have a totally a different curve which is coming which is still lies inside a polygon. I think I can show you an example. Here is an example which demonstrate the convex hull property. So, what is done in this Bezier curve? Bezier curve is shown in yellow here. This is the first point, this is the second point, this is the third point and you have a fourth point which is shown here. Now, this curve has a tangent which is from 0 to 1. So, the curve this is the tangent which is shown. Similarly, it has tangential to last and last but one. So, this is the final curve. What is the polygon here? Polygon here is an intersecting, has an intersecting vertices. So, it goes from P0 to P1, P1 to P2, P2 to P3. And if you see the curve, this polygon is in two portion, curve is also in two portion and one portion lies inside entirely inside this triangle other portion lies entirely inside this triangle. So, the convex hull property is still met even when you have uh, a control polygon or a char characteristic polygon where you have a intersecting edges. This is true for uh, not necessarily for a cubic Bezier curve, this is true for higher order curves irrespective of any number of control points which I take and irrespective of any number of intersections which are happening. Like I may have uh, a series of points like which are intersecting multiple times, still you will see that the curve always lies inside this particular thing. Now, this is also uh, this property can be used in number of ways. Okay. Uh, like how is this property helpful is first thing is if there is a curve you can always set the bounds. That means, if I join the control points and come up with uh, a control polygon, you know that the curve always lies and it does not go outside this. So, you are in a way finding a bound for the curve uh, is one thing. Second thing uh, which you are also trying to use is uh, since like uh, it lies inside this particular a bound characteristic polygon. Suppose, if I want to find out let us say intersection of this curve with let us say another curve or a polygon or something or I want to find out let us say whether uh, two Bezier curves are intersecting or not, let us say two planar Bezier curve. What do you do? Like how do I evaluate this particular aspect? 
is since both of them are cubic in equation, if I write down the mathematical equation for curve 1 which is cubic, I have a second one which is also cubic and if I try to solve this is mathematically it poses certain difficulties. Okay. You have to uh, this is usually done numerically and you have also problems, but I can have a quick check first find out a whether the characteristic polygons are intersecting or not. Suppose if the polygons are not intersecting you really do not have to go and find out whether the curves are intersecting. So, a lot of computation can be saved uh, in many situations like uh, finding the intersections etcetera which is usually uh, done as a part of this. So, convex hull property is used in number of ways in situations like this uh, to find out or uh, basically to find out the intersections or uh, to define the curve or to find a bounds for the curve is basically one of the important properties which Bezier curve has. The another uh, a very interesting property of the curve is what is called as a partition of unity property. Like we have seen that in the case of cubic curve, uh, cubic curve is defined by four points. Okay. Like uh, there is x 0, x 1, x 2 and x 3. There is some weightage which is given to x 0, x 1, x 2, x 3 uh, in terms of uh, an expression. For example, if I take 3, n is equal to 3, I have this is 3 c 0 which is 1, 1 minus u to the power of cube and u to the power of 0 that is my first term. So, I have this. If I remove the x 0 x 0, x 1, x 2 and x 3 okay, and just add the remaining portion that means, the value which is attached are the you can say the value with which x 0, x 1, x 2, x 3 are multiplied and add them it is always unity. Okay. This always uh, unity that means, whatever may be the u value whether u is equal to 0 or u is equal to 0 0.2 or 0 0.5 or 0 0.8 or 1 whatever may be the u value. If I just add the magnitude with which the x 0, x 1, x 2, x 3 are multiplied it always turns out to be unity. I think this is shown here by a simple example. For example, if I take uh, cubic curve n is equal to 3. So, this expression when you expand it becomes 1 minus u cube which we have seen 3 is the binomial coefficient the next one then you have 1 minus u square into u then 3 1 minus u into u square plus u cube. So, now whatever is the u value which I substitute you always get back the value which is 1. Let us just check for example, if I put u is equal to 0 what happens? So, you have if u is equal to 0 all of them will be 0 and this will be 1. If I put u is equal to 1 this all these things will be 0 and I have still as a 1. Now, let me choose let us say u is equal to 0 0.6 just to show this. So, I have 1 minus u cube so, 1 minus u cube would be 1 minus 0 0.6 which is 0 0.4 into cube which is shown here plus you have a 3 this is 1 minus u square and into u which is shown here plus 3 which is a binomial coefficient multiplied by 1 minus u into u square which is shown here plus u cube which is nothing but cube of 0 0.6 uh, which is u is equal to 0 0.6. Now, if I add the all these terms that is the four terms which are coming that will be a value which is equal to 1. So, this property is usually called as partition of unity property. This is true for uh, other points like other Bezier curves too. For example, I may go for higher order than cubic that is a quartic curve still the partition of unity property is valid if I go for let us say higher order still it is valid. Now, this also gives some kind of an intuition like uh, an intuitive aspect to the curve in the sense uh, a Bezier curve is nothing, but uh, like you are actually taking a different weightages for the curves uh, weightages for these four points which you are trying to define. For example, x coordinate is defined by only four points four values what is the x coordinate value at the point 0, x 0, x 1, x 2 and x 3. You are actually assigning different weightages 
to these points as you move from u is equal to 0 to u is equal to 1. At the starting point, you give a 100 percent weightage to the first point and 0 weightages to the other point. Whereas, when I go to let us say the other end point, I am giving 100 percent weightage to the fourth point and not giving a 0 weightage. By varying these weightages in certain fashion, which is mathematically defined, you are actually getting the x coordinate, which is different at uh, different places. So, it gives some kind of like how the curve is defined or the intuitive aspect of this particular curve. Now, most of the time uh, like we have seen that when we were discussing about the advantages of parametric uh, representation that most of the parametric curves can be represented in a matrix form. Okay. That is very convenient when it go when one, one goes for let us say programming aspect. So, similarly a Bezier curve can also be represented in a matrix form. We have seen uh, I think this for a parametric cubic curve earlier, uh, we will see the same thing for Bezier curve. So, what is shown here is this is a, a cubic curve which is shown here, this is the expression which I have just reproduced which we have seen again and again. Now, I can expand this particular this thing. So, I can expand it for 1 minus u cube and write down this uh, like as a multiplication of x 0, x 1 and others. So, these expressions are written in a expanded form. Now, I can always rearrange these terms. For example, instead of uh, having the terms which are uh, multiplications of x 0, x 1, x 2 and x 3, I would like to rearrange the terms like all the terms which are uh, u cube, u square, u and uh, the constant coefficient. So, if I write down then the same expression can be written in this manner. Okay. This, is, this is the expression where you have x 0, x 1, x 2 and x 3 terms. Here you have u cube, u square, u 1 constant terms which are rewritten uh, the same expression which is there. <coughs> this expression I can also write it in a matrix form. What you see here is uh, like if I want to know what is the x of u. Okay. So, one thing is this is nothing but basically a uh, u cube multiplied by minus x 0 plus 3 x 1 minus 3 x 2 plus x 3 which has been shown here which is in this particular case. So, the same thing can be written in a matrix form. Now, this matrix form allows you uh, like uh, particularly to carry out transformations etcetera. Now, when we said it is invariant under transformation, suppose if this curve I, I define a Bezier curve which may be let us say uh, cubic curve any order and I rotate it and I translate it etcetera. So, what do you do is you do not disturb these two aspects of the matrix, this remains the same. You just transform these points, Trans applying a transformation on points is much easier than applying the transformations on a curve. So, just transform these points which are shown here and again multiply with the same expression which is shown here in order to get back. So, uh, transformations are much easier to apply when you define it in a matrix form. Now, what is shown here is basically for an x. Similarly, I can write down for an expression which is uh, y and z which are also functions of u and in order to make it uh, more specific, you also say that u varies. Uh, between 0 and 1 that is the parameter range uh, which is to make it a, a complete expression uh, which is there. So, this is another you can say a very uh, it offers a simple mathematical definition which can also be written in a matrix form uh, in a very convenient manner. Then one can also define uh, the Bezier curve representation to define the closed curves. Now, when can you say that a Bezier curve is a closed? Yeah. Suppose if I have a starting and end points which are same, uh, that means your end point which you are defining has the same coordinates as the starting point and we know that curve passes through the first and last points. So, it will come and close this particular curve, that is what is shown here. So, how many points you have here? This Bezier curve is defined 
by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 points starting point and end points are the same. So, it passes through the first and seventh point, it does not pass through all the other points, but still you get a very smooth curve and you can also see that the convex hull property is still there, the curve will lie entirely in this and the tangent also for example, uh, the star first point and the next point will define the direction of the tangent at the starting and at the end it is defined at this. So, this means like in this particular situation this curve is smooth except at the starting point where there is a discontinuity in terms of slope. Like if I take this particular point there are two slopes at the start point and end point one which is coming from start point which is this direction and another. So, that means there is a uh, the curve is continuous in terms of points that means it is closed but it is not continuous in terms of its slope. So, what do I do like suppose if I want to make uh, the curve which is continuous in terms of slope I can always do it by manipulating these control points. Suppose if I make these three control points collinear, if I make them collinear then what you are trying to do is that you are actually trying to have the same direction that is uh, the as far as slope is concerned at the start which is defined by start point end point is the same now they are coinciding. So, I get a smoother curve which has a continuous slope continuity over the entire period of this. And similarly, if I want curvature continuity also for a cubic curve, I need to define these uh, control points in certain manner in order to achieve this. So, cube uh, the Bezier curves are not only used for uh, open curves, they are also used to define the smooth uh, closed curves which can have either uh, a continuity. Now, whenever a curve is defined, uh, there is something which is I think one should also <coughs> know about the continuity like if the curve is defined in such a manner that it has uh, there is no continuity in terms of points okay. or I may have a curve which is continuous in terms of points like all the curves which we have which we have seen including this has continuity in terms of points. This is usually called as a C0 continuity that means it is continuous in terms of points. If, it, if I take let us say there is a unique first derivative or unique slope at all the points on the curve then you say that it is C 1 continuity that means one order higher. If the second derivative is also continuous that means there is a unique value for the entire curve then it is usually called as a, a C 2 continuous or C 2 continuity. And one of the reasons for choosing let us say a cubic curve both for Hermite and the Bezier is that if I am going up to cubic this C 2 continuity is met ok up to second derivative I have a continuity requirements which are met which is basically what is a requirement in uh, many of the situations which we are trying to use. So, these are like some of the properties of Bezier curve and uh, what I have discussed is like mainly the advantages, but Bezier curve also has limitations ok. What is the limitation? Like Suppose, if I want to define a Bezier curve which is defined by 10 points. So, what would be the order of curve? So, you have to go for a terms which are like u to the power of 9 or 1 minus u to the power of 9 which is not uh, like uh, it is not easier to handle uh, the powers like u to the power of 9 and 1 minus u to the power of 9 uh, in terms of like mathematically. Because suppose, if I want to know uh, like if I want to solve this particular equation. So, I have to find all the 9 roots of a equation etcetera which is not a very convenient in some situations. So, it is better to go up to cubic. So, that is one problem that means number of points control points will dictate what is the order of curve which you are going to use. So, but ideally I would like to have a cubic which is which is always fixed that you can only define by 4 points. So, how to overcome this is one way to do is what is called as a piecewise Bezier curve. Like I can take all the 9 or 10 points control points, 
but don't define let's say a curve which has a terms like u to the power of 9 etc i define the curve which is interpolating these points okay uh, by in terms of a cubic curves which are in terms of pieces just like if i have a set of points i join them as a piece wise linear segments instead of a curve the same thing can be done uh, for what is called as a, a cubic piece wise cubic bezier curve which is a more common representation another disadvantage which you will find here uh, in terms of cubic curve is usually called as a global propagation of a curve okay. this disadvantage is usually called as a global it is it, also a property but uh, not uh, let us say a property which is used for advantage which is called as a global propagation what do you mean by that if suppose i have a curve which is defined by a set of control points let us say i use six control points to define let us say a quintic bezier curve okay. or take for example this closed this thing and uh, i have a curve which is defined by all these control points now i want to change the shape of curve locally okay now if i move one of the control point it will change the entire shape of the curve you cannot restrict the changing the shape of curve locally because all the control points participate in terms of defining this thing since once the control point changes except for the starting and end points where it passes through the curve definition changes uh, entirely or you have a small change which is made locally propagates throughout which is called as a global propagation uh, of a bezier curve so this again can be overcome if i am going for let's say uh, a piece wise cubic bezier curve if i am doing it in terms of pieces if i change a control point it will only affect one or two or maybe more bezier curves which are uh, uh, in which it is participating and the propagation is not that not uh, carried out but a better way to do uh, a better way to take care of uh, a global propagation would be to define another curve okay which is more commonly known as a b spline curve okay b spline curve uh, has an advantage that uh, there is no global propagation it is still b spline curve is again used to uh, define by a control points which can be any number 10 15 or this thing if i am using let's say a cubic b spline curve then changing the control point like if i change a control point shape of the curve changes locally and it doesn't change globally so in order to overcome this disadvantage the b spline curves are used and uh, we'll study about b spline curve in our next lecture okay and then the b spline curves can be further extended uh, to define what we call as uh, nerves or non uniform rational b splines if i use the rational representation of a b spline then it becomes uh, what is called as a nerves which are you can say uh, a most common or uh, a standard representation which is used by uh, which is used in cat cam industry so in next lecture uh, we'll study about uh, b spline curves and we'll extend the definition to uh, nerves also because uh, there are a lot of uh, commonality in terms of defining a b spline curve and a nerves curve and once we have defined a nerves curve we can extend all these definitions to surfaces okay like so far we have been restricting our study only to the curves but i can also extend a hermite curve or a bezier curve or a b spline curve or a nerves curve to define uh, like a bicubic patch or let's say a bezier patch or a b spline patch or a nerves patch which is nothing but a surface we'll see that as we go along this particular thing so i'll just stop it here uh, as far as bezier curve uh, discussion is concerned if you have any questions uh, please feel free to ask so why uh, apart from start and end points mm. the other points are called as control points control in the sense uh, you are actually those points are used to control the shape of a curve if i move the control point the curve shape changes so a designer still 
can make use of all those control points to change the shape of a curve. So, you are actually since you are controlling the shape of a curve, the word control comes. It does not pass through, but they affect their coordinates. Yeah, you had a question. Can I repeat? Yeah. See, uh, I think what uh, the question is, uh, what are C0, C1 and C2 uh, continuity requirement? Okay. Now, like take for example, uh, an example of a polygon. Let us say I have a closed polygon. If I take an example of a closed po polygon, I see that uh, I have, let us say, if I try to trace this particular polygon vertices. I can start from a point and come back to an end point without any break. Okay. But the problem with a closed polygon is when I come to a vertex, I have two vertices that is basically a two edges which are intersecting. So, at the vertex point, I do not have a unique direction or a slope. So, you have a discontinuity as far as the slope is concerned. Since it is continuous in terms of points, but not in terms of slope. So, I can call it as a C0 continuous curve. Take for example, a circle. Circle is an example where if I start from a, a point and come back to my starting point after tracing one complete loop, during my entire path there is no discontinuity in terms of slope. Okay. There is only a unique slope which is defined at all the uh, points. So, you say that circle is an example of a curve which is not only C0 continuous because there is a point continuity, but there is also a C1 continuity, there is a, a slope continuity. Similarly, I can extend the definition to higher order as uh, if the curvature is continuous, I can call it as a C2 continuous etcetera. Yeah, any other? Yeah, affine trans. Uh, your question is, what are affine transformations? See, affine transformations are, uh, as I said, geometric transformation, where you have translation, rotation, scaling. In fact, the word transformation is used in many ways in uh, graphics and CAD CAM. Like you also have what is called as a viewing transformation. In viewing transformation, what you do is that you have an object which is sitting in a space, but you are viewing from different directions. So, in this case, you are actually not changing the uh, like shape or location of uh, this particular point. Okay. So, it is like uh, it is purely from the viewing point of view you are looking at, but geometric transformation is usually like you define a curve and then rotate or move it in a space or scale it in order to get uh, an object. For example, I want to define let us say a solid cylinder in a space which is inclined uh, like whose axis is arbitrarily inclined to three coordinate axis. So, how do I do that is first I define let us say a cylinder which whose axis coincides with x axis and then apply the transformation and uh, do let us say get back the uh, cylinder where it has to be there. That means, you are placing the cylinder orienting the cylinder wherever it is intended to be because defining directly a cylinder along an arbitrary axis may be much more difficult. So, transformation helps you to do this particular. Okay. So, I think I will stop it here and we will take up B spline curves uh, in our next lecture.